Hey everybody, this is Tommy G. And it's PJ. And PJ, look at that record, man. Well, don't look at it yet. Look at the, the backdrop there. We are still in Phoenix. <laughs> we are in Phoenix, Arizona, where we're going to end out the rest of our season. Actually, you're looking at uh, looking at Apache Junction, which is kind of nearby where the the stadium is located at the east edge of, of Phoenix. But uh, this is the area in which we play ball. And when we're done looking at this B-roll here of the lovely city surroundings, it will bring you to our current season record, 21 and 20. We got a winning record, Pete. I know, which, uh, you know, when you consider where we started from at the beginning of this season, the fact that we are above 500, sitting alone in first place, and we have a positive run differential, you would have thought we were we were on something. Uh, despite our best efforts, we have a winning record. <laughs> brings it back to the season standings, kind of say where you showed up. We're close close to the wire here we got um we're you know we're hanging out there and i guess well let me sh let me run back the schedule the schedule three games left in this monster season all at home this game today there are two teams that we've yet to play and game and we're at game number 42 one is today the outlaws the oakland outlaws and then next game the uh the missouri hot corners and then then it's back out it gets the old familiar herbiosaurus to end off that regular season Yep, all three home games, all three um, uh, opponents we should be able to beat. Uh, we don't want to take them lightly, obviously. We don't want to take it for granted, but uh, that's what we're going to need to do because when you go back and you look at those seats and standings, those sirloins are not going away. So, uh, yeah, we got to keep winning until they start losing other or, or just win out. You know, uh, otherwise they're going to they're gonna start gaining pretty quick. They do something. Well, happy St. Yeah. Patrick's Day, my and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the last game. Talk about beating opponents. Mr. Bender got going early in the top of the first when he put away the dominant Jacques Sports for his first K of the day. Yes, the sir. The B-Wolves then get the offense going in the bottom of the inning when Hanley Dexteris puts this one over the left field wall, putting the blue and gold out in front early. They've been doing that a lot recently, Pete. They've been getting on the board quick. That's something they talked about at the beginning of the season for so long and now finally they're doing it with consistency yeah yeah they they have been getting off to a fast start the other thing i've liked is even though there's kind of a lull through the the middle of the uh, game they they put a couple more on toward in the late innings which is always good too because it helps to put the game away yes well so in this last game hito moonshada showed he wasn't going to let his nemesis get blanked as he pounds this one way out over the center field wall in the top of the second it's a 1-1 score with a home run for each team, we've seen a lot of that too. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of long balls late half the season here. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's. Uh, I don't know if the uh, pitcher's getting a little tired and, and just serving up some meatballs, or if uh, at this point in the season everybody's kind of gearing up for uh, the playoffs and they're they're on you know they're on point. Uh, um, but yeah, a lot of a lot of balls flying out of the uh, ballparks. <laughs> Well, better clamp down soon after that to cap off the half of the inning when he struck out Flash Leather, Leather for strikeout number two. But then Magic Moore decides to assert Beowulf authority when he hits this two-run home run with Gina Torrance on base, putting the Wolves out in front by two in the second. So that's another thing they did. Again, you know, they got out in front, they got tied, and then they said, and Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just like that, too. I heard him as he came around third. I think so. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie Slam. Jackie Slam was next in the Nemesis player to feel the wrath of Bender as he racks up his third K on the top of the third. I believe she pronounces it Jack K. <laughs> he gets Stacy Staples in the top of the fifth for number four. And then he gets Leather again for number five. And then he gets the Nemesis pitcher Ansel Carus to finish off the side. And in the bottom of the sixth, Billy the Boink nails this one out in the left field, bringing in two more runs, making it a 5-1 to one game. Pete, the bases were loaded with no outs before this. The Boink came up with two outs on board, so they were close to stranding the whole crew. We've seen that a lot, too. Yeah, we did, especially the, this last game. We saw a lot of runners left on base. It was uh, not a shining moment for the uh, B-Wolves, even though they came out with the victory. You'd much rather see them kind of clean that up and start bringing those guys home. Uh, but, it, yeah, definitely a couple of uh, key situations squandered. 
Well, Javier brought in Mushada in on this infield grounder at the top of the seventh, bringing the nemesis closer by one. Yeah, but just a quick sidebar. He told Moonshada has no speed. The idea that he would outrun a ground ball on the infield is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but then in the bottom of that inning, the lovely Gina Torrance keeps her streak going by launching this arcing fly ball out over left center field, and the score is now 6-2 Beeble. So it's a nice, nice attempt by the right fielder to jump and try and catch that, but uh, that's only the second we've seen from Torrance all year. No, she's she's been a little bit cold this year, not not really getting uh, getting the bat on the ball very well. She's I mean she started off pretty well, but she slowed down somewhere about the middle of the season. And um, while she hasn't been horrible, she just hasn't been her normal Torin self. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Except for the tattoos. <laughs> yes, the tattoos are hers. Bender jumps back on board the K train, dropping Marilyn Mephisto in the top of the eighth inning. And he keeps things going against Hito Munshada in the top of the ninth for K number eight. That and that one, I love that one because you know uh, Munshada all game had had uh, Bender's number. He had a, a single, a double, a home run. All he needed was a triple, and he would have w- hit for the cycle. And yet, the last at bat, Bender gets the best of him, and that was awesome. And what a day he had too. Well, yeah. the things come to a close in the top of the ninth with this outfield fly ball by Memori Aoshima, and the Beebles achieve a winning record for the first time this season at game 41 of 44, Pete. And like you had mentioned before about Bender, again, the thing about him is he's, he's got to be the best hitting pitcher in the league. He not only is he you know, out there on the mound just putting him away, but he's, he's adding to the score sheet. Yeah, I mean, he had a huge day at the plate, although he didn't really account for any runs. He didn't score any runs, nor did he have any RBI. Um, he was three for four on the day, so he was he was doing his level best mm-hmm. um, to to put the pressure on on Caruso um, and get get runners on the base pass. So um, even that 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 even pays off too. That putting that pressure on the opposing pitcher helps a lot. Well, here we are then at regular season game forty two of forty four. It's the Oakland Outlaws who are power hitters at seventeen and twenty five. They're not only known as power hitters; they've just just as good contact as well too so a little bit a little bit dangerous there so offensively you think they do well they're slow uh their defense is okay in the bullpen their pitching's not that like good so um you know they give up opportunities and i gotta say their jerseys look like look like some college fraternity just playing softball i don't, I don't, know, I don't know if i like their away jerseys anyway they're going against some people who are 21 and 20 contact specialists but we also excel in our rotation as as mentioned before Starting pitcher for the Outlaws is going to be the the left hander, the southpaw, Liv Shaw, and Liv throws the ball with average uh, velocity, a little less than average junk, but she's pretty accurate. She's got a three and three record on the season, so she's hoping to, to get a winning record. She's got a 3.75 ERA and a 1.42 W hip. W hip. <laughs> to the hip, to the hip. <laughs> she's locked in. She Notable is. Players for the Outlaws, the locked-in uh, Reynolds. She's at shortstop. She's got excellent power, uh, excellent ability to, uh, to make contact at home plate. She's got better than average speed, hitting 248 with six home runs. Strong out in right field is a power hitter, period. That's all I'm going to say, <laughs> period. <laughs> he's got about average contact at home plate. He doesn't have a whole lot of speed, but he's hitting 296 in the season with five home runs. And then Ray over at first base, excellent power uh, better than average ability to connect and, and about a little bit less than average speed. He's hitting 198 with three home runs on the season. That's 14 home runs and those three players alone. That's pretty good. It's 14 more than I got. They're going to be facing the starting pitcher, Beavis Ortiz, his last regular season game of the year. The right-hander throws the ball. It's pretty average, down the line. Velocity, junk, and accuracy. He's only 2-5 and five on the season, so he's hoping to get that thing 3-5 and five to, to end up Kind of mediocre season for him. He's got a 3.96 ERA though, so it's below four, and a 0.99 WHIP. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean for uh, for the pitching staff, I mean Beavis Ortiz has one of the worst records on the team at two and five, but one of the best ERAs, <laughs> which doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> right. But uh, he's got behind him uh, Laura Franco at first base, excellent power, really good contact, and uh, really good speed. She's hitting 362 with five home runs. Hanley Dexter is the superstar shortstop. He's got a little bit better than average power, but he's got great ability to connect. 
and great speed. And he uh, led off that last game, like Tommy told you, with a home run to start things going. He's hitting 307 with five home runs. And then you got Buster Biggs out in left field, and he's got uh, good power, uh, better than average ability to connect, and good speed. He's hitting 409 on the season with seven home runs. And so the um, power hitting outlaws with their 14 home runs, and then the B Wolves with their 17. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Uh, well, I was going to say too. about that Ortiz thing. Uh, there's one way that that's, that scenario is possible. It's a, he may have pitched very well in some games, and then the relief came in and kind of lost it. <laughs> that's one way you can get to that statistic. <laughs> yeah, and when you look at the you look at the power bars up there next to the B Wolves, they struggle with power, and their bullpen uh, also struggles. So, although to be honest with you, they've been pretty. I mean. Uh, I can't argue. They have given up long balls, but uh, they've been pretty solid, too. Yep. This B-Wolf team is really starting to move into a more balanced position because even that power rating, like Tommy said, I, I over the past, what, three games, I don't even know how many home runs the B-Wolves have hit, yeah. but it's a lot. <laughs> it's yeah. a lot. <laughs> Uh, well, we're getting our lineup in here, and it's going to look a little bit like this. Guess who's going to bat first? You wouldn't, you'll never guess, so I won't even let you. Gina Torrance <laughs> at oh, uh, really? second base. She's now locked in. So she's well, that's to, it. We're going to lose. She's looking to strut her stuff. At there second. goes the game. <laughs> <laughs> she's followed closely by Hanley Dexterous, who will play shortstop. Magic Moore will bat third. He's also locked in, so it'll be good to see the Magic Man out there. He's been producing well lately. And Laura Franco is going to play first base and bat cleanup. Bat number five is Buster Biggs, left field. Not Bertha, Buster Biggs. <laughs> Poke Foster will be playing in right field. Poke Foster is juiced. So Poke's playing right field. Interesting. That's not, uh, that's not right. <laughs> Usually LeBoink plays, but LeBoink's... Uh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm looking over there. LeBoink's... Um, he's tense. A little bit tense. So okay. Poke's going to shift on over to right field. He's He played a little... No, he didn't play in the last game, did he? That was... Benny Balmer. Um, Poke comes out and he's all juiced. The top physical condition, so he's open to show his stuff. Bertha Banks is going to bat seventh to play third base. Behind the, behind the plate is going to be Eliza Peck batting eighth and batting ninth. The pitcher, Beavis Ortiz, who throws a four finger curveball slider in the fork pitch. And Pete, we are two and a half games ahead of the Sirloins, so these last three games are going to be pretty important. They are. They are. And it sounds to me like maybe the B-Wolves are using this as an opportunity. They got lesser uh, competi com competition. Um, you're heading toward the playoffs. Maybe they're, they're looking to uh, rest up some players, which that's all well and good, but we can't afford to lose these games. So It's important enough to close the dome. <laughs> yes, sir. Going for the Outlaws, Majors at third base, Reynolds at short, Ray at first base, Strong in right field, Mayer at second base, Fernandez in center field, Barry in left field, Quinto catching and Shaw at first base, I mean pitching, and Shaw's locked in. He's coming up in the top of the first, Iceman Majors, Baylene Reynolds and Ashlyn Ray are going to take a look at uh, Beavis Ortiz, step into the box against Ortiz to start this one off. Majors pointing to the outfield to start with. He's hitting 255, two home runs, and eight RBIs he is. on he's, the season. He's a good contact hitter, Majors. He's got only two home runs, like you said, so I'm not too concerned about him taking a while. And this game's underway. Beavis Ortiz starts with a nice breaking strike. That one's popped up as he jammed him on the right side. Buster Biggs ranging up to get it. Grabs it on the fly for the first out. Good start. All right. Yes, sir. Baleen Reynolds, Reynolds, the shortstop, is locked in. She's got a 248 batting average. She's got six home runs on the year, so that's impressive. That's, ooh, it's a little bit more than Laura Franco does, so that's your, your reference. Hits that one hard down the line, foul on the third base side. Oh, one of the count. She's also a really good contact hitter. And here comes Bertha Banks on the run, whips it, makes the out. Good, good heads up play, Bertha. She got that one quickly. Ashlyn Ray is hitting 198 on this season. She's also a power hitter. The, the looks like they top load this front half of the of the lineup. The first pitch, a nice fastball there by Ortiz, a strike. On one account, Ortiz has only thrown five pitches so far. He's on his third batter. Nice curveball in there for a strike. Two. Ooh, tries to get her swing it inside, jam her up. She does not go. It's one and two the count. And we're looking to get out of this inning pretty quick here. Under 10 pitches for Beavis Ortiz. There it is. She gets a piece. Pushes it foul. 
Still wanted to. Oh, she crushes that one, and luckily it just foul way out there in right field. And still it wanted to. There's that breaking pitch she couldn't seem to hit, but now all she's getting Beavis to pitch to her. She's going to have to throw 11th pitch to her. See what she does here. Ooh, in the dirt. She doesn't go. 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Got some Outlaws fans here in Phoenix. Made the trip. It's not that big of a trip to get out here. Oh, she pops that one up in the right field. Poke Foster rolling over to get it. Grabs it for that third out. Yeah, Reynolds was a little difficult there. Yeah. Coming up in the do uh, bottom of the first, Gina Torrance, Haley Dexterous, Magic Moore are going to get a first look at Liv Shaw. Outlaws 1-2-3 in the top of the first, although Reynolds did make uh, Ortiz throw some pitches. She did. Let's return the favor. Torrance is locked in and fit, hitting 269, two home runs, five RBIs. First pitch is high, ball one. Ooh. That smashed. It's deep to left field. Yes. That's gone. And Gina Torrens, two home runs in two games. Way to go, Gina. And the Cubby Wolves have led off again. Third home run and sixth RBI of the season. This one starts the scoring for the B Wolves, and it's one to nothing. Wow, and that was a low pitch too. I wasn't sure she should have chased that. Dex comes up, swinging a miss on that first one, strike one to one of the count. Bottom of the first, still no outs, and it's one nothing B Wolves. Mixes it up with one apiece there from Liv Shaw. She gets two strikes in on there, spits a little something out, but Dexter is a tough out. Here it comes low, good patience by Dexter. Two apiece now. That one's right oh. there. Oh, but Dex goes out quick, and he knew it. Dang. Nice Miller change up. Locked in and fit. Hitting 369 this season. Five home runs, 20 RBIs. He's locked in and fit. That one's inside. Ball one. Now it's fouled off hard along the third baseline. One ball, one strike to Magic Moore. Hmm. That one's lifted to the shortstop. Reynolds who makes the catch for the second out. Here comes Alora Franco, hitting 362, five home runs on the year. Getting her first pitch from Shaw, pitch number 11. It's in there for strike, one of the count to Alora Franco. That one comes across too far inside and too high. Ball one. That one's on the outside corner. She reaches out, Texas Leaguer, and that's in. going to land in right field. She's going to come back. There's no way she's going to make it to second. Good, good single there by Alora Franco. To Laura Franco at first base and Buster Biggs, the left fielder, is up. He's neutral and fit, hitting 409 this season with seven home runs, 26 RBIs. She's in there for called strike, strike one. And Laura Franco's off with the pitch. Bad. Oh, and they get a Laura Franco <laughs> trying to steal second for the third out. But the B Wolves put one on the board. And it's B-Wolves 1, Outlaws nothing. Aiden Strong, Easton Meyer, and Emily Fernandez going to come up. Ortiz threw 12 pitches in that first inning. Aiden Strong, the right fielder, is neutral and fit. He's hitting 296 with five home runs, 20 RBIs. Ortiz was able to go through the... That's fouled off <laughs> along the first baseline. Out of play. Ball one. I mean, uh, strike one. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That one's outside. Ball one. Count is evened up, one and one, Bean knockout coffee. That's in there for a called second strike. One ball, two strikes to Strong, the right fielder for the Outlaws. That's fouled off hard along the first baseline. And Strong bought himself another pitch. One ball, two strikes with no outs. That's fouled off along the third baseline, and he'll do it again. One ball, two strikes. Swing and a miss, and Strong was swung right through it for the first out. And the first K for Beavis Ortiz. Easton Meyer, the second baseman, he's tense but fit. Hitting 228 on the season. Three home runs, 14 RBIs. He shoots that over to the deck stairs and picks it up, makes the double pump, and gets it over to Franco to retire. Meyer. Emily Fernandez, the center fielder, is tense and fit. She's hit 266, two home runs, 15 RBIs on the season. Two outs in the top of the second with the Beals holding a one to nothing lead. Oh, and that's going to get into left field. Biggs picks it up and gets it into Torrens at second base pretty quickly. That's going to hold Fernandez to a single. Aaron Barry, the left fielder, is locked in and fit. You got a runner at first with two outs. 
Barry takes the first pitch for a ball. Ball one. Barry's hitting 273 on the season. Takes the second pitch for a called strike. Evens up to count. One and one. Ortiz steps off the rubber. Horses the runner back to first. That's in there for a called second strike. And Barry finds himself behind in the count. One ball, two strikes with two outs. Pops that one up. In the foul territory along with third baseline, and Peck is out to make the catch for the third out. So, no runs, one hit, no errors in that inning. Buster Biggs, Polk Foster, and Bertha Banks are going to take their shot against Liv Shaw, who threw 15 pitches with a strikeout and gave up two hits in the first inning. Biggs, the left fielder, is hitting 409. Seven home runs, 26 RBIs. Oh, just gets hold of that one, pushes it foul along the third baseline. That one's outside, even to the count, one and one. That one's outside, two, ball two. There's a smash up the middle. Ooh. Reynolds lays out for it, makes the oh. grab. Oh, and is able to get Buster Biggs in a tight bang bang play. Great dive by Reynolds there, wow. Poke yes, Buster sir. comes up, he's juiced, hitting 375. Takes the first pitch of the first strike. Only one the count to Poke. Bottom of the second. Still one on Vita Wolves. That one's low. She's got a scratch. Gets an itch. Winds up. Fires it. That one's in her strike two. One and two to Poke Foster. That one's in the dirt. Cricket pitch. Nice stop by the catcher. That one jams him up in the hands. Little liner to Ray at first for the second out. Yes, sir. Bertha Banks, the third baseman's neutral fit, hitting 320 with nine home runs, 22 RBIs. Two outs in the bottom of the second. B Wolves with that one to nothing lead. First pitch is in outside ball two, two and oh. That one's outside ball three. Banks is one of the most walked hitters on the league. <laughs> and Bertha Banks takes a base, was walked on four pitches, so we got a runner at first base. We do. Eliza Peck comes up. Solid contact hitter, only hitting 213 on the season. That one skips in the dirt. Ball one to Eliza. I don't know what's happening with Liv Shaw here. She's throwing a 30th pitch. It looks like she's running out of gas. Little grounder to Majors at third, who throws her out at first for a third out. <sighs> Coming up in the top of the third, Nyla Quinto. Liv Shaw. And then we're going to get back to the top of the order with Iceman Majors, who's 0 for 1. Ortiz at 24 pitches, one strikeout, and giving up one hit. Nyla Quinto, the catcher, is neutral and fit. It's good contact hitter. Ain't she, Tom? Not a whole. Yeah, I'd say I'd even go with Pete there. She's been part of every pitch so far for her team, and now she's going to get a crack at the ball. First pitch in by Ortiz is strike, only with the count. Second one misses high and inside. One apiece, evened up. Beautiful day here in Phoenix. Little grounder, foul ball, going nowhere. Strike two. Rufus Ortiz closing in on 30 pitches. He gets 28. Strike three. That's his second K, I think, of the day, Pete. Way to go, 43. Yes, sir. Here comes Liv, Liv Shaw. He's got a little bit more power than your average pitcher. Not, a, not an awful hitter. He's got a zero, a zero average. So, oh, hits that one hard. Oh, a diving grab by Fetch. <laughs> Guitar solo. Oh, that was going to get past her, too. Mm. Iceman Majors. Good contact hitter. Fair power. Takes first pitch for a strike. Second pitch he gets a hold of and hands it out to a fan on the first base side. Foul ball. 0 oh, 2. Hard hit to Bertha Banks, who's going to pick it up. Whip it to first. What a. I'll take it. <laughs> you okay? I am. Did you pass out? What happened over there? <laughs> Coming up at the bottom of the third, Beavis Ortiz is a first at bat. Torrance, one for one with a home run, and Hanley Dexter is 0 for one with a strikeout. Shaw's up to 30 pitches with one strikeout and giving up two hit, three hits. Three, yeah. Ortiz is locked in at fit. He's hitting 111 with one RBI on the season. Shaw floats that one in there for a called strike. Strike one. That one's low, ball one. One ball, one strike. Tortiz, he smashes that foul along the third baseline. One ball, two strikes. Ortiz is behind him. Uh -oh. Now that's popped up high into shallow center field, and Reynolds is out and makes the catch for the first out. Good Reynolds, muscle. Reynolds, the shortstop. 
Good muscle by Ortiz there. Cheetah Torrance came up. He got one, two pitches, one home run. That one's low. Well, Shaw's a little bit cautious to throw it right now. Ball one. Ooh, swung a day early, number 28. That one, she hits hard up the middle, and Gina Torrance is riding the wave, Pete. That's another single by the yes, second sir. base lady. She's playing well the last two games. Hanley Dexter is 0 for 1 today. Speed over there, first base in uh, Gina Torrance. Oh, they knew it. They That's pitched pitch out. Shot. They got her. Ah, uh, they got her. God dang. Two straight. <laughs> yeah, I can't. <laughs> I haven't stolen a base in a while. Oh. All right, that's lifted foul. One ball, two strikes with two outs to Hanley Dexterous. Gina Torrens got thrown out trying to steal second. That's inside ball two. The count is evened up. Two balls and two strikes. Dexterous fouls that one off. He'll get another pitch. That one's re lifted into right field, but Strong is under it and makes the catch for the third out. So we're heading into the top of the fourth. Baylene Reynolds 0 for 1. Ashlyn Ray 0 for 1. And Aiden Strong 0 for 1. Ortiz is at 32 pitches with two strikeouts and giving up one hit. B-Wolves holding on to a 1 to nothing lead. And they need to stop running themselves out of base run. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Baylene Reynolds, the shortstop, steps in. There's a roller to Gina Torrance. She'll pick that up, make the throw to first, and get Reynolds for the first out. Ashlyn Ray, the first baseman. She's 0 for 1. Hitting 197 this season with three home runs and 21 RBIs. She made Ortiz throw some pitches in the first inning. She takes the first pitch for a called strike. Strike one. She delivers. Ah, it's a little low. Ball one. One ball, one strike. That's popped up, and Bertha Banks, the third baseman, steps just into foul territory, makes the catch for this. And Aiden Strong, the right fielder, is neutral and fit. 0 for 1 today. Power hitter, Strong. Two outs in the top of the fourth. B Wolves holding on to a tenuous 1 to nothing lead. A first pitch by Ortiz is in there for a called strike. Strike 1. That one's a little high. Ball one. Count is even. One and one. Ortiz is locked in right now. There's a roller to Gina Torrens and we'll pick it up. Make the throw to Franco for the third out. And we're heading into the bottom of the fourth. Magic Moore 0 for 1. Laura Franco 1 for 1. Buster Biggs 0 for 1. Shaw's up to 43 pitches. He's got a strikeout, a walk, and giving up three. Bulls, one run on three hits. Outlaws, no runs. One hit. Beavis Ortiz with a one hitter. Magic Moore, the center fielder, is locked in. He's got good. So for one on the day. He's got good contact against left handers. And that's his pitch. Whoa, and he places it a little too far left. Foul ball down the third base line. Oh, one the count to Magic Man. That one's inside. Good patience. One piece. That one's up high. Ooh, strike. That made it in there. Liv Shaw throw number 47. That's also high, but he felt he had to swing at it. Pop up in the right field, yeah. and that's caught by Strong for the first well, after time. After that last ball. <laughs> right. You never know. Uh, Laura Franco, the first baseman, one for one with a single. Come on, Laura. Let's get something going here. We need to put a few more runs on the board. That's ripped foul along the third baseline. No balls, one strike. One out in the bottom of the fourth. Franco, the first baseman, is in. That's in there for called second strike, and Franco's in the hole 0-2. Ooh. Swing and a miss. And Franco goes down on strike. Shaw's got three now herself. Yeah. That's a one, two, three, two. Buster Biggs over for one. He's he's looking to punish Shaw for that last one. That would have been the pitch. Strike one, oh one on the first count. That one's outside. A little tipper. Liner to Majors. Three out. One, two, three. All right, that's not good. East, uh, <laughs> coming up in the top of the fifth. Easton Meyer, oh for one. Emily Fernandez, one for one, and Aaron Barry, oh for one. Ortiz is at 39 pitches, two strikeouts, and giving up one hit. Now batting, the and again, outlaws one nothing. Ortiz is at a good. Hit Ortiz is at a good pace. East yes, sir. Easton Myers over one, but he's looking a little bit tense. He's a good power hitter, real good contact. He'd be doing some real damage if he wasn't so so darn tense. You can see it. <laughs> First pitch, nice breaking ball inside corner, strike one. Swing and a miss. That one's a swing. A little liner to Torrance, who's going to pick it up. Whip it over to Franco at first for the first out. Two pitch, one out. 
Emily Fernandez, she's one for the single earlier in the day. Looking calm, chewing gum. Nice stance, nice form. Gets a little roller to Dexterous, who's going to run up, whip it to first, gets her for the second out. It's a good, real good pace here. Good defense by the B Wolves today. Yeah, yeah, and, and but Ortiz is doing a pretty good job of keeping the ball uh, in the park, and not, not just in the park, but in the infield. Yes, yes, nice inside breaking ball there. Swing and a miss, strike one to Barry. For a team that's known as a power hitting team, Popped they up really haven't gotten anything out of the in infield, really. That's true, that's true. Oh, and two to Barry. Gets a little roller to Gina Torrance. That's going to be an easy one. She scoops it up, throws it to first one, two, three. There's not a lot of offense here today, Pete. <laughs> no, sir. And the B Wolves have to change that. We got to get some runs on the bar. Pope Foster over. For one, Bertha Banks with a walk and Eliza Peck 0 for one shot. 52 pitches, two strikeouts, a walk, and three hits. Come on, let's make Shaw throw some pitches here. Polk Foster 0 for one on the day's neutral and juiced, which is, I think is illegal. <laughs> <laughs> but I won't say anything if you don't. So the first pitch is in there for called strike. That one's high, ball one. Count is even one and one. There's a smash. That's going into left center field. That's going all the way back to the wall, and Poke Foster's coming around. He's going to pull in the second with a double. Way to go, Poke. So a leadoff. Yeah, a leadoff double for Poke. Bertha Banks comes up. She had a walk early on. She's locked in as well. She's got Poke Foster at second. There's not in any real danger to steal any bases. So just remember that, Pete. <laughs> Outside corner strike one to Bertha Banks. Inside corner ball, ball one to Bertha Banks. I'm sorry, one apiece. Bottom of the fifth, it's one nothing B Wolves. That one misses. Two and one to Bertha. Bertha may not have to swing today. Ball three. She just she's about to put her bat down. You can see it. <laughs> Strike two. We got a full count to Bertha. You never know. Liv Shaw throwing pitch number sixty one. Outside a second walk to Bertha Banks. She never swung, right? Eliza. No. Eliza Peck the catch was neutral. Pitch is over one, hitting two oh eight. No home runs, four RBIs. Runners at first and second with no outs. And Peck tries a bunt down first baseline. Everybody's going to be safe. Perfect sacrifice by Eliza Peck. She moves the runners to second and third with one out. Unfortunately for Peck, she's had a lot of those that were effective, but she gets nothing on her stats. The infield's in for oh, and that's it. That's into the outfield. And we got we got the one run coming home, crossing the plate. The Beebles are now up two nothing. Still just one out with Gina Torrance coming up. And I think Ortiz is stealing second. <laughs> no, <I'm just laughs> Gina Torrens is stepping in. Runners at first and third with one out. <laughs> that pitch is outside ball one. Beagles with a 2 nothing lead. Oh. There's a shot. That's going into uh, right field. And another run comes in, crosses the plate, making the score 3 nothing. Ortiz down. does not have a lot of speed out there. No, I, I can't imagine we're going to see much more Liv Shaw here. She's getting lit up in the fifth inning with only one out to Dexterous, and that could be the nail in the coffin. It's going back. Oh, and he catches. Barry catches the ball at, oh. at right, left field, but the runner was too far back to tag up and go back again. Doggone it. I can't go on. Magic Moore 0 for 2 today. <laughs> two outs. Runners at first and second. Beavers have put two more on the board there. That first one's low, ball one. One and oh, two outs in the bottom bottom of the fifth. Swing and a miss. Moore was a little late on that one. One ball, one strike. That one's low. That one's high. Count is three and one to Magic Moore with two outs in the bottom of the fifth. What's he hitting that for? Got Come on, shot Magic. Shot back to Shaw, who makes the throw to first to retire Magic Moore, but the uh, B-Wolves put two more on the board, making it three to nothing from B-Wolves. Nyla Quinto, 0 for 1 with a strikeout. Liv Shaw, 0 for 1, and Iceman Majors, 0 for 2. Ortiz is at 45 pitches with two strikeouts, and he's given up one hit so far. One hitter, that's a great day. Quinto, the catcher, is 0 for 1 today. 0 for 1. <laughs> she steps in. And Ortiz is getting ready to deliver his 46th pitch. That one's fouled off along the first baseline. Own one. Swing and a miss. And Quinto is in the hole. No balls, two strikes. Allen's a little high. Ball one. One ball, two strikes to Quinto. 
Fooled her completely. She swung right through it. And Quinto is down on strikes. That's three strikeouts today for Beavis Ortiz. Liv Shaw, the starting pitcher, is going to get yanked here. And now we're going to bring in Chucky Taylor, the pinch hitting shortstop. Taylor hitting 190 on the season with three home runs, five RBIs. And he's got just a little bit, he's feeling neutral and fit. He's got a little bit better than average power, but he's got average contact and average speed. It's Chucky Taylor pinch hitting for Shaw, who will be lifted in the uh, bottom, the top of the sixth. For First some pitch reason, to Taylor's outside. Ball for one. some reason, the name sounds familiar to me. Chuck Taylor. I mean, did we? Did he play for another team earlier this year? He may have. That's in there for a called strike. Evens up the count. One ball, one strike with one out. That's in there for strike two, and Chucky Taylor is behind in the count. One ball, two strikes. Or oh. geez, gets him to swing through. No, wrong button. No, wrong button. Oh. He swung and missed, which should have been a strikeout, but Eliza Peck couldn't handle the ball, so he took off for first base, and she wound up throwing a second, which was done. <laughs> One out. That's popped up into right field. Pope Foster is under it, making the call. He makes the catch, throws the ball over to first to hold Chucky Taylor to first base. So two outs with a runner at first, and Baleen Reynolds, the shortstop, who's locked in and fit. But hitting 0 for 2 today. Two outs with a runner at first. That one's low. Ball one. That one's outside. Ball two. Two balls and no strikes to Reynolds. That's in there for a called strike. Strike one. Ortiz is now on fire and fits. Allen's low, ball three. Three balls and one strike with two outs to Reynolds. She's delivers. That's in there for a called strike, and the count has gone full. Three balls, two strikes with two outs. Come on, Ortiz. That's fouled off along the uh, first baseline. Taylor was off with the pitch. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. <laughs> Ortiz steps off the rubber, does a pirouette, and then throws to first base. <laughs> There's a roller back to Ortiz, but with two outs, they'll go right to first to retire the side. And Chucky Taylor, the pinch hitter, will be pulled in favor of Caleb Murphy. Caleb Murphy, the relief pitcher, he's got a 6.85 ERA, a 1.62 whip. He's got 27 Ks on the year. He's tense, though, and fit. It's a good Irish name. Junk in accuracy. <laughs> yes, sir. For St. Patrick's Day. And he's wearing green. <laughs> His velocity, junk, and, and accuracy are all uh, underperforming his his career stats. But he's got about average velocity, a little bit uh, less than average junk, and he his uh, accuracy uh, suffers a little bit. He is uh, does not have full stamina, but he's pretty well rested. He's known around the league as a K man, so he's a strikeout guy. He throws a four seam fastball, a slider, a curveball, and a changeup. So as we head into the bottom of the sixth. Alora Franco, one for two with a strikeout. Buster Biggs, 0 for two. Pope Foster, one for two with a double, are going to get their first look at Caleb Murphy. Bulls, three runs on six hits. Outlaws, no runs on one hit. Franco's one for two with a single. She's feeling neutral and fit. Neutral. The first pitch misses by a mile. Ball one. First one for Caleb Murphy. Ball two. Murphy looking for his first strike. That makes it in there for strike one, two. Well, the crowd didn't like that, though. Bottom of the sixth, three to the Beagles. Ball three. He's having a hard time finding the bullseye. Oh. Oh, she reaches out and just tosses that over Why? to Ray first time. Why? <laughs> Why do you do that? <laughs> Buster Biggs, the left fielder, 0 for 2 today, hitting 405 with seven home runs, 26 RBIs. Why? That's in there for a cold strike. Ooh. Swing and a miss. And very quickly, Buster Biggs is in the hole, 0-2. That one's outside, ball one. That's outside, ball two, evens the count up at two. That one's outside, three and two, count is going full. There's a shot that's going to split the third baseman and shortstop and land in left field. Barry picks it up and throws it into Mayer at second base to hold Biggs to a single. All right, Pope Foster coming in one for two with that double earlier. He's juiced, man. He's got good contact right now. 
He's got a more than slow runner at first base and Buster Biggs. First pitch misses, second pitch misses, ball two, two and oh the count. That one's hit hard in the left field left center field. That's gonna be another multi base one, Pete. And Hernandez is throwing that from left field. That's getting plenty of time for Buster Biggs to come around and make it four nothing. Wow. All right, all right. Buster, I mean, Bertha Banks at the third base was locked in and fits. He's got two walks today. Polk Foster standing at second with one out. Banks takes the first pitch for a cold strike. Strike one. That one's fouled off. And Murphy's accuracy is starting to suffer, and he's rattled. That one's high. Ball one. One ball, two strikes with one out. Hmm. That one's way outside. Ball two. Two and two to Bertha Banks. That one's high, and the count has gone full. Three and two to Bertha Banks. That one's way outside, and Banks gets three walks. She wow. has not, she's uh, not swung the bat yet today. She, well, she was 0 for 2, and then he came back with four straight balls. And here comes Eliza Peck now. She's 0 for 1 of the day, doing okay for contact. She got runners in first and second with only one out. That one's right in the middle, and that's going to be a good one for her. That's going to be a multi, multi bagger. If she's she, Eliza Peck is getting. Okay, they're going to hold up there. Eliza Peck, it's a double. <laughs> RBI. Oh, boy. Vince Ortiz is on fire and fit. He's hitting one for two with a single in RBI. Runners at second and third with one out. Ortiz splits the third baseman and the shortstop with a single into left field. Barry throws it in, and Bertha Banks crosses home plate. So the B-Wolves are putting on a clinic now, Tommy. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, Gina Torrance three for three. They're keeping Caleb Mur Murphy in there. I guess they figure there's... Look at why throw good money after bad. There's a jump. Good oh. job by Mayer. Second base oh. liner. He jumped up and grabbed that. Hanley next there is the shortstop. He's 0 for 3 today. He's a tough out and a utility player. He got runners at first and third with two outs now. First pitch is inside ball one. B Wolf six outlaws nothing in the bottom of the sixth inning. Now it's inside two. Ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Oh, that one. <laughs> Ripped foul along the first baseline. Two balls, one strike. Ah. That's a shot right to Reynolds at shortstop. She picks it up, makes the throw for the third out. And Here we go with Dexteras again. He's <laughs> <laughs> 0 for 4. So uh, Ashlyn Ray 0 for 2. Aiden Strong 0 for 2 with a strikeout. And Easton Mayer 0 for 2. Ortiz is at 61 pitches with four strikeouts and giving up one hit. b Wolves have taken a 6 to nothing lead now. Ashlyn Ray's 0 for 2 today. Good power hitter. Beavis Ortiz on fire. Pitch number 62. Looks like a curveball. Outside corner. Swing and a miss by Ashlyn Ray. Strike one. Top of the seventh. Six nil. B Wolves. Second pitch is there for a strike. And Ortiz is in the driver's seat. Let's see what Ray does here. Pops that one up by the net. Away. Comes back our way. Just under the booth. Still at 0 2. Swinging. Oh, that's luckily. That's foul. Right on the line. It goes. Just east of first base. Still 0-2. That one hit hard. Franco jump. Not going to make it. Foster in a good spot to pick that up. He's going to hold her up at first base for the single. That was a good hit by Ashland there. Okay. Aiden Strong 0-2. He's a power hitter. In fact, the, the infield is going to do something. <laughs> I don't even know what they did. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Waiting for a pitch there. One misses that. And the outfield's going to go deep for Aiden Strong. The strong man. 292 with five long balls and 20 ribs. That one just missed his bat. <laughs> Could have been a foul ball there. 2 0 the count from Beavis Ortiz. Closing in on 70 pitches. Number 69 misses inside. Ball three. He's, he's falling behind here now. He's got 3 0 count. Pitch number 70 is a nice breaking pitch in there. For a strike, 3 and 1. Strike two. Now he's got back in it. Three and two. See what Strong does here. Swings at that one. Oh, and it oh. goes into right field. Foster's going to pick that up. Throw it to second base to hold everybody up there. Come it's on. a single by Strong. they got runners at first and second and no outs. And here comes Easton Mayer. 0 for 2. Solid contact. Beavis Ortiz throwing 73rd pitch to Mayer right now. 
Check swing misses inside. Ball one. The ump wants him to get in the middle. Give me a freaking break. Too quick call. Pete's about to jump out of the booth here. There's a breaking pitch in there for a strike. Two more than <laughs> Mayor smiles. That one misses inside. Oh, give me a break. Three and Come one. On, <laughs> Just gotta throw him fastballs. That's all I can throw him? Outside. Three and two full count. What's gonna happen, Pete? Plays at third base. Strike three. No swing. Strikeout. I guess that first one he thought Ortiz was gonna choke. Emily Fernandez, one for two on the day. Two long balls, 15 RBIs. Runners at first and second with one out. She anticipated that first pitch curveball. <laughs> Pops that fastball, and that's going to drift over their own dugout. Second row back, souvenir on the third base side. One, one, and one. Top of the seventh inning here in Phoenix. She hits that one hard to Buster Biggs. Liner, who's going to throw back to second. And the runner gets back. That's two outs. Beagle's hoping to get out of a tough situation here that started poorly. Aaron, Aaron Barry is 0 for 2, but he's going to have a seat. He's going to be relieved for pinch hitter Hash Weaver. Hash is a strong power hitter, good contact, a little, not that fast. He's, he's a little tense as of late. The pressure ramps up here for Hash, the right-handed batter. As Peck looks for a signal, gives it. Ortiz throws it, misses inside, ball one. One of the count to Hash Weaver. He's got six home runs on the year, so they're hoping for a long ball from Hash to get this back in the game. Two balls by Ortiz. Pitch 84 makes it in for a strike. Two and one the count. Curveball hits that one hard down the right first base side. Foul ball. Two, two, two. Nice trap by Eliza Peck on a bad pitch there. Full count. Runner goes. Fouls that one off on the right side. Still three and two, top of the seventh. Inside corner strikeout number three and closes it out, Pete. Whew. That was <laughs> tough. That was a tough one. <laughs> Go in the bottom of the seventh. Uh, Beal six. Outlaws nothing. Magic Moore over oh three. Laura Franco one for three with a strikeout. Buster Briggs one for three with a uh, strikeout. Magic Moore the center fielder's neutral and fits. Got good connection versus. Oh, Caleb Murphy's going to get yanked here, and they're going to bring in Maximilian Garcia. Maximilian Garcia has a 3.6 ERA, a 1.3 whip, 10 strikeouts on the season. He's feeling neutral and fit. He's got a bit, a little bit less than uh, average velocity. He's got a little bit better than average junk. And he's got about average accuracy. Again, he's not fully rested, but uh, he's pretty, pretty well rested. He throws a four-seam fastball, a two-seam fastball, a slider, a curveball, and a changeup. I'll tell you something. The outlaw uh, relief pitchers have a lot more variety of pitches that I'm used to seeing. So we're also going to get a new fielder. Hash Weaver, the first baseman, is going to get um, pulled in favor of Chili Dunlap, a left fielder. So, uh, oh, well, uh, they had Hash Weaver playing left field. So, okay. No, no, he was, he was pinch hitting. Oh, he pinch hit. Okay. Yeah. So Chili Dunlap is going to come in. Uh, into left field. He's got two errors on the season. He's hitting 196 with two home runs. He's tense and fit. He's underperforming his uh, normal stats, but he's got uh, pretty good speed. He's got pretty good fielding, and he's got about an average arm. He's known around the league as a whiffer um, and a stealer, so if he can get on base, he can he can make things some things happen. He can. Garcia throws the first pitch in for a strike. Only one the count to Magic. Second one misses ball one. One apiece. Third one on the inside corner, strike two, one and two. He should follow this with a ball. There doesn't. Magic reaches out, hits a roller to Majors. He throws it to the first for that first out. Alora Franco, the first baseman's tense but fit. She's one for three with a single today. She's hitting 362 this season. One out, nobody on. First pitch by uh, Garcia's a high ball one. That one's hit on the ground, foul toward first base. That's in the dirt. Two balls, one strike to Franco. Mm. Swing and a miss. Franco is out in front of that one. Two balls, two strikes. That's outside. Count is going full. Three balls, two strikes to Franco. That one's out. Franco walks. So runner first with one out. Buster Biggs steps in. Buster Biggs, one for three with a single earlier. Still hitting over 400 on the season. He's got a fast runner, Franco, at first base. That one goes high, ball one. 
Second pitch from Garcia. Right in there. Hits it hard up the middle. Straight to center field. Fernandez wow. is going to hold him up. Nice single. I got some chug. I got some chug and chug going on. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Pope Foster, the right fielder, is neutral and juiced. He's hit two for three with two doubles and an RBI. He got runners at first and second with one out. Foster takes the first pitch inside. Ball one. One on all. Foster takes the next pitch, and that's outside, 2-0. That's popped up into center field. She can run to third. Uh -oh. And there she goes. She's heading off to third base. And she's going to yes. be in there with a tagged up. So runners at first and third with two outs, and Bertha Banks is locked in. Good heads up base running by Laura Franco there now is at third base. Got runners at the corners, two outs, a medium pressure situation. Garcia's throwing a 16th pitch to Bertha Banks. She smashes it. It's going deep, and it's caught. Oh. Caught by Fernandez at the warning track. <laughs> Damn it. I got oh. nothing but chug there. <laughs> Coming into the top of the eighth, Nyla Quinto over for two with two strikeouts. Maximilian Garcia's first at bat. I don't know if he'll see the, the batter's box, but Iceman Majors 0 for 3. Quinto's 0 for 2 on the day. Hit 293 on the season. Top of the eighth inning, B Wolf 6, Outlaws nothing. Beavis Ortiz is on fire. He's got 62 Ks on the season. That one broke her bat and went foul along the first baseline. So no balls, one strike to Quinto. That one's outside. Ball one. One ball, one strike to Quinto. That's in there for a second strike, and Quinto finds herself behind in the count. One ball, two strikes with no outs. Mm -hmm. That one's a little low. Evens the count up at two and two. Ortiz delivers his 93rd pitch. It's popped up on the infield. Franco's calling everybody off. Makes the catch for the first out. And Maximilian Garcia, the relief pitcher, stepping in. He's neutral and fit. He's going to get yanked for Mato Piddlestick. Mato Piddlestick, the third base, uh, the pinch hitting third baseman. He's hitting 238 on the season with two home runs, five RBIs. He's feeling neutral and fit. He's got a little bit better than po average power, a little bit better than average contact, and a little bit less than average speed. So the Outlaws trying to get something going here in the top of the eighth with one out. Swing and a miss, and Piddle Stick was out in front of that one. Oh, bless you, <laughs> Beavis Ortiz. No balls, one strike with one out. Allen's low ball one. One and one. But you got to wonder about this outlaw pitching staff and how uh, that's lifted into right field, and there's a lot of lag. But <laughs> Foster's there to make the catch for the second out. Iceman Majors, the third baseman, he's neutral and fit, but he's 0 for 3 on the day. So, yeah, you start to wonder about what this is going to mean for the outlaw pitching staff. <laughs> that's fouled off along the third baseline. No balls, one strike. More than likely, we'll, be, we'll see their closer in the, in the bottom of the eighth. That's fouled off along the third base line. And very quickly, Iceman Majors is in the hole. No balls, two strikes, two outs. Nobody on in the top, top of the eighth. That one's popped up in foul territory. And Bertha Banks makes the catch in foul territory for the third out. And leaving the game will be Mato Piddlestick, the third baseman. Pinch hitting third baseman. And they'll be bringing in Quinn Nams. Scala, Scal, Numskal, Quinn Numskal. <laughs> Quinn Numskal is coming in. He's a starting pitcher slash relief pitcher. He's got a ERA of 4.98, a WHIP of 1.6, and he's got 23 Ks on the season. He's feeling neutral and fit. He's got better than average velocity. Uh, his his junk leaves a lot to be desired, and he's got less than average accuracy. And he's not fully rested. Um, he does have a reputation around the league of being a composed pitcher. He has a four-seam fastball, a slider, and a curveball. So as we head to the bottom of the eighth, Eliza Peck one for two with a double. Beavis Ortiz two for three. And Gina Torrance three for four with a home run. Numbskulls taking the uh, bump for the Outlaws. And they're running out of time, folks. they got to keep the B-Wolves off the board this time and then try to get something going. Otherwise, this game's going to be over. Mm -hmm. Eliza Peck one for two with a double. Numbskulls' first pitch is high. Ball one. He That's brings the heat. He's going right up the middle into center field. And Eliza Peck has reached first base safely. 
So a leadoff single for Eliza Peck. There they go. Peckinator. Beavis Ortiz, two for three. With two singles and two RBIs. I think he's staying in because they're hoping he plays the whole game. His first whole game, that's going to be a liner to Reynolds. A nice reach out grab. She watches first to make sure nobody goes. <laughs> Gina Torrance, three for four with a home run, two singles, and two RBIs today. She's been on a bit of a tear the last couple of games. Eliza Peck standing at first base with one out. That one was low, ball one. That one shot into left field. It's going to be caught. Eliza Peck gets back to first base safely. So two outs with a runner at first, and Hanley Dextera stepping in. Hanley Dextera's 0 for 4. 0 for 4. I can't go 0 for 5, can he, Pete? Come on, Dex. Get in there. Get in the game. First pitch is way outside. Ball one. Um, Skull's seventh pitch is in there for a strike. One piece, two outs in the bottom of the eighth. Six nothing, B Wolves. Uh -oh. a day too late. Swing from from Dexterous. That one's right in there. He pops that up. Right. Chasing it back to the third baseman. Majors who gets that third out. 0 for 5 for yeah, Dex not, today. Not, not a good game tonight. Not a bad, bad Chug. Baleen Reynolds, Ashlyn Ray, and Aiden Strong. Reynolds 0 for 3, Ray 1 for 3, and Strong 1 for 3 with a strikeout. Ortiz is at 89 pitches. No, he can't be, because I said he was at he's at 99 90. pitches. Yes, close it in on 100. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully he doesn't blow his arm out here. <laughs> well, I think he's trying to get that whole game. He's got to throw some strikes off. First pitch outside, ball 1. Second pitch of the first strike to Baleen Reynolds, and he's now got 101 pitches under his belt. Inside quarter strike two. He's still bringing in the heat, though, Peach. That took the, the, uh, the radar gun on this next one. Swing and a miss, strike three, the top of the ninth. At Ashlyn Ray comes up. She's one for three with a single. Beavis Ortiz has 103 pitches. He's hoping to get out with 105. There's 104 misses inside. Ball one. That's not going to happen anymore. One out. Check swing strike one. One, one, and one. Even up here in the top of the ninth. It's six nothing. People's blank of the outlaws. It's not even a close match. This is oh, on come that on, one. Ball two. <laughs> and so far, he's not in the tank on anything. Swing and miss. A nice breaking pitch strike three. His velocity's gone way down now. He's a little sneeze there. But he just needs two more outs. And he's got two strikes on Ashland Ray. Misses inside ball three. Full count. Fans standing up. There's a pitch hit back over the net behind us. Foul wall still full up. He was Ortiz at fire pitch. 110. Swing of his strike three. <laughs> Another K, Pete. And now it's just Aiden Strong. One for three with a single. Ortiz is losing his stamina. But he's just got one more. He could do it. He can go the full game. Check swing strike one. The crowd's behind him on that one. Second pitch in. Swinging roller to Gina Torrance who picks it up. Tosses to first and that's the game, Pete. Beavis win. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Great complete game pitch by Beavis Whew. Ortiz. I wouldn't have guessed that at the beginning of the game. No, sir. That's two in a row. Two complete games. Bender went full. Ortiz went full, um, and boy, what what a game! What a game! Yeah. For Ortiz, yeah. Uh, he he throws a shutout. I mean, he kept the, he kept the outlaws off the board. Uh, kept the power hitting team to only three hits. Yeah. That's a three hit shutout for Beavis Ortiz. I'm telling you, he you know he again we said it at the top of the game. He had the worst record of the pitchers on the team, but he had the best ERA. And yeah. then, you know, he just showed you what he could do. <laughs> Beavis put one on the uh, the winning run, really, uh, in the first inning. That was uh, Gina Torrens, wasn't it, with the yeah. home run? Yeah. That's the winning run. Um, they put two more on in the fifth, three in the sixth. They end the game six to nothing. Um, outlaws three hits, again, we said, and Beavis with uh, 12. Would have liked yeah. to see a couple more runs. I mean, they, they yeah. had... Uh, Half, but then you look at the uh, look at the list. Yeah, Outlaws got a few a few offers. Over four majors, over four Reynolds, over four Meyer, over three um, Quinto, over three, and then the only ones that got one Ray was one for four. Strong was one for four, but they both struck out as well. Fernandez one for three, 
it never really amounted to anything. Uh, I don't know if they ever got anybody right, past right. second base. Look at all the subs they had too. No, I agree. I agree with you. Yeah, I, uh, I don't think they did get anybody past second base. They were threatening. Uh, one was it the uh, the uh, seventh? It must have been the seventh inning because I, I believe I was pitching. So they were threatening mm-hmm. a little bit in the seventh, and, and Ortiz seemed to be having trouble getting the calls. Um, but yeah, they at, at most it was runners at first and second, and Ortiz buckled down and was able to get kind of get them out of that. But uh, mm-hmm. then you look over at the B Wolves, no subs. Yeah, just. <laughs> and again, look at look at it, our pitcher, and he went two for four with two RBIs. Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a pitcher <laughs> pitching offense. Yeah. And Pope Foster had a good day too. Also two for yeah. two for four with one RBI of his own. Uh, Gina Torrance he did, gets he that scored two runs. That home run three for five. Great day for the Torrance lady. Looking at pitching, the Outlaws uh, Shaw gets wait, the wait, oh, Banks. Bertha Banks, she had one at bat, she scored two runs, and she was walked three times. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, and yeah. El, El Shaw gets the, the pitching loss for the Outlaws. She throws five innings, gets six hits off her, three earned runs, walks two batters, strikes out two batters, and gets one home run off her. Her ERA sinks to a 3-9-1, which isn't bad. Uh, she's got a 3-4 and four record on the season. She was evened up, but she's going to have a losing record. Kay Murphy comes in, throws an inning, gets four hits in one inning, three earned runs. Murphy just just collapsed, uh, walked a yeah. batter. His ERA is up to 7-3-1. Now he's 3-5 and five on the season. Garcia comes in, throws an inning, gets only one hit, walks a runner, ERA at 3-4-3, at a 1-1 one one record. And then Q. Dom Skull <laughs> throws an inning, gets one hit. That's it, 4-8-4 four four ERA, 3-2 and two record on the season. And then over there for the B-Wolves again, it's a, it's not a lot. It's uh, Bebas Ortiz went nine innings, gave up only three hits, no earned runs, no walks, eight strikeouts. So he replicates what uh, what uh, Hurley Bender did. Mm-hmm. He no gives up no home runs though. Um, he walks out of here with an ERA of three point four five, and his record improves to three wins, five losses. Again, I think he's got the best ERA on our pitching staff. Yeah, and most impressive too. There, he two of those eight strikeouts came in the top of the ninth when he was just gassed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. He, he had it together and was able to put it, put it through. So no and, surprise uh, look then. Who's the first, first yeah. star of the game? Starting pitcher Beavis Ortiz pitched nine innings, gave up three hits, and had eight strikeouts. That's a yeah. That's a great day for any pitcher. It's followed second by the B plus second base woman Gina Torrens, who's been off the board for so long. She continues riding the wave. She was three for five today with one home run, her third of the season, uh, in second two games, uh, two RBIs and a run. And then rounding out the stars of the game is Polk Foster, the uh, backup right fielder. He came in, had uh, went two for four, had two doubles, scored an R- had an RBI and scored two runs himself. So Polk had himself quite a day as well. Yeah, that's the kind and of day you want to have if you're if you're you know backup and you finally get the chance to shine you want to come out there and make the stars list <laughs> and this is what i like to see this is me and tommy all the way tommy was six <laughs> hits, one home run three rbis one great catch and three strikeouts for a contribution of 50 percent i had pj had uh, six hits three rbis and five strikeouts for a contribution of 50 percent that's i like it when it works out that way <laughs> <laughs> neck and neck <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with that yeah, ain't nothing wrong with that no, sir. What well, a that, game. Yes, that yeah, brings out. brings oh, us wow. to the post-game show here. Uh, looks like we got seven other games to to call in to, to show you where we're at in the standings. So why don't we do that? You ready, Pete? Yes, sir. Starts off with the Gold Coats on the East Coast against the Front Runners. Gold Coach travel to meet the fr- front runners, and it's Gold Coach all the way, seven to one. The Jacks go out to California to play the Blowfish. It's mostly Blowfish, nine to four. The Herbosaurs playing the Platypie, and it's Herbosaurs early, and it's Herbosaurs late. They take it seven three. The Moon Stars play the Sawteeth up in San Jose. The Sawteeth win it six three. The Grapplers and our old friends, the Freebooters. Grapplers jump out early and hold on to win eight three. The Buzzards and the Wild Pigs going for second place in the. It's close, but the buzzards win at 6-5. The 
the moose in the freedom and it's freedom six four so that ends it let's see if i do the i can't remember okay so you start p pathfire con pioneer conference pathfinder oh, hold on. i gotta <coughs> i gotta jump out because oh wait a minute why is that it's not working okay because i have to i can't get the uh wild card results otherwise okay so right. pa a pioneer conference pathfinder division Sitting alone in first place, the Moose, with a record of 26 and 17, they hold a two-game lead over the Blowfish, whose record is 24 and 19. Yeah, that's impressive. The Moose are, are the favorites. Uncharted Division, the San Diego Platypi are in first place right now with a 23 and 20 record on the season. They've got a two-game lead against the 21 and 22 Buzzards, Colorado Buzzards. And then down in the Journey Division, our sister team, the Sandcats, with a record of 24 and 18, hold a one-game lead over the second-place Arctics, who are sitting at a record of 23 and 19. When you come over to the Explorer Conference, we're at the Seafair Division. Uh, it's the Detroit Heaters now have the lead there with a 25 and 17 record. They only have a half-game lead against the Houston Jacks, and it's been a run-and-gun battle for most of those teams the entire season. What a what a division that is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and to be at this late in the season and really to have four out of the five teams still in the hunt. Yeah. That's crazy. So down here in our very own trade division, our very own B-Wolves, with a record of 22-20, and 20, um, they have a three-game lead now over the Sirloins, who will be playing um, right after our next game against the uh, Hot Corners. They'll be playing the Water Bullets, who can play spoiler here and really put the nail in the sirloin coffin which would be nice but the sirloins are at 19 and 23 and they they're three games out of first place i think pete does that because we have two games left i think does this is this our clincher have we clinched a playoff berth now as the, as the division champs i think we may have yeah we only have two games left um yeah i think that's it because even if they beat the water bullets and the next team um yeah they should they should be out of it i think so we're the we're the only team in the trade division with a with a winning record and with a positive run differential <laughs> okay and yeah. so anyway we finish off in the curiosity division the right now the san diego sawteeth are in first place with 25 and 18 record they're only a game and a half ahead of the uh the the colorado warblers who are 23 and 19 so it's close it's still close in a lot of places. And now, if you look at, you want to do the uh, wild card. Sure. Over in the Pioneer Conference, the Moose, the Sandcats, and the Platypi all have a, a uh, playoff berth by virtue of being um, the first place in their conference, in their divisions. Um, the wild card contender right now is the Blowfish, and they have a, a record of 24 and 19 and a run differential of plus 42. Uh, behind them are the Arctics, who are sitting at 23 and 19. Uh, they're a half game back, but they have a negative four rough run differential. So, if they end up tied with virtually anybody, um, the other team's going to win it because uh, the run differential for the Arctics really kind of precludes them from any real shot at the wild card berth. Yeah, you got the uh, <coughs> just behind them. You've got the Crocodons. Um, again, they're sitting at 23 and 20. They're a game out, um, but they've got a run differential of plus 35. The Burners, they're a game and a half out. They're 22 and 20, but they've got a plus 25 run differential. So again, uh, even if the Arctics finish with the same record as the team, it, it's you know it, uh, it, they, they they'll lose by virtue of the run differential. So the Arctics are virtually out of it, I think. Yeah. Well, e yeah. Well. Boy, I don't know. Unless, unless the blowfish. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I guess the Arctic's would have to take the Sandcats. But anyway, okay. Over to the Explorer Conference right now. The Heaters are in first place. The Sawteeth and the Bee Wolves. Uh, the Jacks have the wild card spot with a um, with their run differential. But now, if the Jacks take if the Jacks take first place, the Heaters may very well get the wild card. So chances are, chances are that what you're looking at right here is going to end up being the playoffs. Yeah. I, I would agree with that. The, the heaters and the jacks may switch places, but yeah, I think I think that's the way it's going to break down. Yeah. 
um, because there's only two wild card contenders in the God. Our conference sucks. <laughs> 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 of all the, you know, we got three teams in wild card contention. The Jacks with a plus thirty run differential, the front runners with a plus fourteen, which is respectable. But there's no way they're going to catch a plus thirty, nor are the Jacks going to drop so far that the uh, front runners will be in contention. Yeah. Um, and the Gold Coats, who uh, all have positive run differentials, everybody else is negative. Well, I guess the wide loads have a plus four, but they're three and a half out, so they're not yeah. going to be. Yeah, and even if the Jacks take first place and the heaters fall, they're still at plus 20. Yeah. And, I, again, I don't know if the front – I mean, it's not out of the question, I guess, if the front runners can win by six or more in, in their last games. Yeah. They could get into it, but I, I doubt it. Well, our next game is going to be against the worst team in the league. The 15- Should we check the, uh, the league leaders? wire before we leave? Oh, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, so so if we go down to... Uh, you want to start or you want me to start? I can start. Okay. Um, Chance Lauderberry gets signed onto the Nemesis, replacing Royalty Ocean. Oh. We just saw Royalty Ocean. We so did. She Royalty. struggled. She did. She did. Um, Royalty Ocean, the B-plus starting pitcher, 33-year-old starting pitcher. She's got a velocity of 70, junk of 51, accuracy of 70. She's got a 5 power and 49 connectivity. And they picked up, oh my God, they picked up uh, Chance <laughs> Lauderberry, the 38-year-old starting pitcher, relief pitcher, who's an overall E+. Plus. <laughs> His, he's got a zero velocity. <laughs> a seven junk. Look, I know, I know. Royalty Ocean struggled against us, but man, come on. Yeah, he's got a thirty-two accuracy, a six power, and a nineteen contact. But he's known around the league as a specialist. He's a specialist, uh, Chan- and he's got more power. <laughs> Royalty Ocean was making nine million five hundred thousand. Um, Chance Lauderbury's making six hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's crazy. That is crazy. I think I got six hundred thousand in my pocket. AI. I can't wait for the new AI. I just <laughs> <laughs> that just doesn't make any sense. <laughs> well, yeah, they're saving up money. I don't know what, but but Lauderberry. Yeah. I mean, uh, Royalty Ocean would be a, a, a good add to any team. So yeah. Well, She'll, she's a little old, a little long in the tooth, I think. Yeah, well, Rocket Ramon Lord is asking salary. The Rocket Man is now. He went from six nine to six five. So we'll keep an eye on the Rocket Man. And then the uh, other player that we're keeping our eye on, Smoke Frederick, the 33-year-old right field uh, utility outfielder, he dropped his salary from 8.9 mil to 8.6 mil. The bargain. <laughs> uh, player development available now. We got cross training availability for Billy LeBoink for 794. He can add one to power, one to contact, one to speed. He got 25% chance of going up five on power, and 13 for going up five on speed. He got 5% chance to gain. The tough out, and we may have to take a look at some. We have to do a live from the hive, and uh, do any last minute developments before the playoffs. I I would agree with that. And then uh, finally, the Moon Stars signed Julio Meadows, replacing Bert Burger or Bergerer, huh. Bert Bergerer, the 31 year old relief pitcher, who's a B plus at an 81 velocity, 69 junk, 55 accuracy, 15 power, and a one connectivity. And they pick up, uh, they're, they're replacing him with Julio Meadows, who is a uh, 20-year-old relief pitcher. He's an overall C-. minus. He's got 44 velocity, so they're almost having the velocity. Hmm. He's a 25 junk, which is a minus 44 on junk. His accuracy is at 40, and he's got 12 power and a 2 connectivity. Bergerger, Bergerger was making $7 million, and uh, Meadows is only making 1500000 so... Huh. Again, I you know I'm kind of getting a little nervous about the off season here because everybody seems to be jettisoning all these yeah all these big number guys in order to to free up money and so I'm I'm starting to wonder what what's going to happen here in the off season um, and what are, what are we going to be able to do but you know we, we'll go through it the first time and I'm sure we probably will miss a few things but we'll le- live and learn right we'll be ready next time. We will. All right. Well, yeah, we'll have to do a live from the hive so we can get back into this. Okay, so 
I guess until then, we'll see this next game will be here again here in Phoenix, uh, where we'll host the the Hot Corners, and um, be looking forward to seeing the last team we haven't seen yet. So uh, for right now, this is Tommy G, and this is Pete J, and we're saying, get out of here.